Hey world, welcome back to the RC Air Experience, episode 17. It's a good one. We have the pleasure of hosting and having in our presence the RC Geek, also known as Chris Wolf, who's on YouTube, who's on all the different things. I've been on your website looking around there today as well, too. Got some experience with your products. So thanks, Chris, for joining us today and I uh, look forward to this conversation. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Welcome. And then, of course, we've got Anthony from FPV Builds as well, too. We can't forget Anthony. I'm, I'm not important today. Chris is way more important. <laughs> it's okay. I was actually, in all honesty, um, I've reached out to a couple of the bigger, and I'm not mentioning any names, but bigger people who have been in the hobby and have more of a well-known, and they kind of like either didn't respond or said no. So I was yeah. kind of, I was, I was happy and surprised that you said yes, because it's a newer podcast, right? And we've we've had a lot of growth in the last, I don't know, seven months that we've been doing this, but it's still a new podcast, right? So it's like, yeah, for sure. Well, and I'll, I'll touch on Chris's stats here. I did some uh, some more research today. So you currently have fifty three thousand eight hundred ish subscribers on YouTube, which is cool. Congratulations. Yeah. So we'll Thanks. just say fifty four thousand. Sure. <laughs> uh, it looks like you've been uploading videos to YouTube for about eight years. Wow. Um, yeah. Currently have. 688 videos on YouTube. Holy cow. 17.1 million views over the life of your channel. So congratulations. That's cool stuff. Yeah, <laughs> Thanks. You know, for as long as I, I've been doing this, I, I'd hoped I'd be a little further now by now, but yeah. <laughs> we all do, <laughs> uh, you know? <laughs> yeah. So awesome. I've, I've only been doing it for about the same, a little bit longer than the podcast with my own channel. I, any advice or anything for any, you've been doing it for a long time. A lot, that's a lot of videos, 617 yeah. videos. <laughs> 60, a lot yeah. of videos. It gets a little bit skewed too, though, because when you start doing the shorts, yeah, you know, those get counted as videos and as part of the views and all that stuff. So it kind of gets yeah, of course. jumbled together. But, um, you know, advice would be just, uh, the key is consistency for one. Um, and just, understanding kind of what what youtube likes to present right. to people right making mm -hmm. content that's kind of in alignment with the algorithm um <laughs> if it's for me tell them i'm in the shower <laughs> <laughs> well it's my computer i was on a on a yep. youtube page <laughs> <laughs> um so that that's a big one and and just providing value to people yeah. helping people out that's that's really what it's all about and, and you talked about how you know maybe some other folks weren't willing to come on or whatever and and what i would say and my whole view of it of the U rc youtube world is you know it's it's not as big as it might seem and and mm -hmm. in my opinion we're all kind of in this together and and right. so if we can kind of look past differences and just figure out a way to collaborate together, work together, because we're all on the same team. That's the way I feel about it. And um, yeah. and so if we are working together, we're growing together, we're promoting the hobby together. It's it's you know, it's a unified right. um, message right. that that we can put out there. But um, I know a lot of the RC YouTubers don't necessarily see it that way, unfortunately, but um, you know, Sometimes it goes back to motive. Why did they start doing this in the first place? Maybe it wasn't necessarily to, to help people. It was personal right. reasons or whatever. But I mean, I, I I saw a gap when I when I was, I guess, eight years ago. I saw a gap in information. Right there's there's RC videos, but was it really quality information? Right. Uh, and I, and so that's really why I started. Uh, I've been in the hobby literally my entire life. Uh, and so I've, I've seen a lot of things, I've done a lot of things and I, and I just wanted to help people, uh, in the hobby, help them to succeed, set them up for success because there's a lot of really bad information out there. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I just wanted to make sure I was putting out good information. Uh, and so, um, yeah, that's, that was kind of how it all started for me. No, I get that. And you're, you're kind of the embodiment of what the RC air experience podcast is because you you don't just do foamies or gas or scratch builds like you do pretty much everything right so like and that's what the I idea do, yeah. 
Right. Well, that was the idea of our podcast was I come from the FPV and foamy side and John is on the turbine side and we're trying to bring, like you just said, all of the hobby together. That's why we called it the RC Air Experience. So you're you're one of those people who kind of dabbles a little bit of everything and do a little bit of everything. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, I love airplanes. So, yeah. <laughs> and especially love scale stuff. That's really where my passion is. And um, there's some really cool stuff coming out. And so sometimes it's fun to to put an ARF together or to scratch build something or or just modify a foamy or whatever it is. I just enjoy it all. Right. Right. So, so with your um with your journey the past eight years on YouTube, what's been your biggest challenge and or roadblock? Oh, the biggest challenge is pro you know, you know, I, my biggest challenge is me. Um I get in my own way. Um sometimes I get frustrated, uh feeling like, oh, you know, I, I I can tend to obsess on stats a little bit and, and when I see things aren't necessarily performing, it's like, uh, it's kind of bugs, you know, it's like, yeah, but it's just the nature of the beast and, and it tells me, oh, well, maybe I'm not making the right content when that stuff is maybe not performing the way I think it should or what have you. Right. So, um, but yeah, like I said, I, I can tend to be my, my own worst enemy sometimes and, mm -hmm. and get in my own, in my own way, unfortunately. Nice. Do you Good um, answer <laughs> two questions? You live in what Utah? Where do you what? live? Where do you live? Utah? Uh, I'm in the Nashville area, Tennessee. Oh, Tennessee. Okay. I've seen you. You've flown in a whole bunch of different areas, right? Yeah. Like yeah. Right. Um, so you're in Tennessee. Are you doing this? Because I know you have your your store with your books, and we're going to talk about a bunch of that stuff later too. Are you doing this full time now, or you still have a day gig? So. Uh... I used to live in California uh, as an aerospace engineer, 20 plus years in Southern California. When we moved, um, there's no aerospace here in, in uh, the Nashville area. And mm -hmm. so um, I did have transition to trying to do this full time. It's been uh, one of the biggest challenges I've ever undertaken, I will say. Uh, but it's been incredibly rewarding, too, <clears throat> because I have... I mean, I wrote a book. I probably would not have ever written a book if I was still mm -hmm. working, right? And so, and that's actually something we can talk about this later. But I mean, I had the idea. I wanted to write a book many, many years ago, even before I was doing anything on YouTube. I kind of had the idea, and and so finally <laughs> came to fruition. Uh, but um, and so, yeah, it's something I have transitioned to full time. Um, it's been, I guess, about two years now since we moved. So we can talk about the book. You, you, you know, that's fine. We can go into that. So going on your on your site, right? Um, and I'll just I'll splash that up real quick. Hold on, just so we can see what we're talking about here. <clears throat> yeah, so it's www.artofscalemodeling.com. Okay, so there go to that one. That's oh. I just closed out the screen. Actually, if you cl click on the blue, the blue bar there, it'll take you to it. This one. Yep. Well, you have you have other ones too, though, right? So, yeah. So that's all part of it. So, so, um, yeah. So we can talk about it here too. So the if on my website, I'm offering them full retail, uh, but I've set up an a other another web page called uh, artofscalemodeling.com. That's and this one. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm currently offering the book uh, for free. Um, just I ask you pay for shipping and handling. Uh, and wow. so I've got uh, the main book. So this is all about painting and finishing. And and uh, I've done a lot of a lot of that through the years. I featured a lot of that on my channel, too. And so I've kind of outlined my my method that I go through uh, for surface preparation, painting, uh, weathering, panel lines, markings, all of that stuff. And so that's Mastering the Art of Scale Aircraft Painting and Finishing. And I ended up writing a second book all about cockpit detailing. Uh, and so uh, on the website, this is an option that you can add to the order really, really simply. 
Uh, but this comes with a, a masterclass video uh, for free. And then also this comes with uh, some other extras. It's a masterclass video for um, intro to airbrushing masterclass video. And then there is a, a toolkit, uh, which is a whole bunch of, it's an online toolkit, a whole bunch of links to everything that I, I used in, in the book that I talk about. Uh, and then to take it a step further, I've got, I actually created a whole video course as well um, for folks who really want to, you know, see all of the methods in the book in real time, right? Displayed and, and um, that's not the word I was looking for. Um, just being shown, right? In video. Mm -hmm. uh, and so through the whole process of all of this, I created a membership website. So all of that stuff is hosted there, the free, the free items, the video course, all that stuff. Um, and so, yeah, just trying to just provide value to folks. Right. Um, and, and my, my whole goal is because there's so much, there's so much joy in creation in the hobby. Like guys are, are missing out on a whole segment of the hobby you know, you can get an ARF and you can fly an ARF as it is. There's nothing wrong with that. Absolutely. Uh, same with foam aircraft or what have you. Uh, but man, if you just take it just a step further, yeah. you can customize it. You can weather, you can do any number of things that, that makes it more your own. Right. And, mm -hmm. and so, um, I want to just show folks how to do that. Uh, it's not hard and you can make it as much or as little as you want, right? You can put right. as much work into it or as little as you want. It's totally up to you. And that's the beauty of it. Yeah. I grew up in, in an era like, so my dad, um, owns jet hanger hobbies. Uh, and so, uh, back in the, I mean, his he's first, still, he, he's, you said owns or owned owns, he's still operating the business. Okay. Um, and so back in the, late seventies, early eighties, he was pioneering RC jets, uh, oh, with cool. the old ducted fans, you know, so he had the Turbax ducted fan, which was the old SCSI fan, which he acquired and, uh, turned into, or created the Turbax fan out of. And so, um, I mean, it, it there were three guys back then. It was Tom Cook, Bob Violet, and my dad, Larry Wolf doing the RC jets way back when. And so, I mean, in those days, if you wanted anything to fly, you had to build it. There weren't yeah. ours. <laughs> right. And so I got to see a lot of really cool stuff and, and it really fostered a, a, that joy in, in building and, and creating. Uh, and so I, I was lucky enough to have a really great foundation from my dad. He showed me a lot of things, but having that foundation, then I, I went out and I experimented on my own, oh, I'm I, sure. you know, developing all my own techniques as well. Uh, and so I started out building plastic models, experimenting with that. And a lot of what I um, wrote in the book kind of translated from my experimentation with uh, plastic models. And, and I started applying those techniques on, you know, uh, the, the RC models. And right. so, um, yeah, it's, it's been a culmination of, let's see, I built my first scale model at 18. It was a Royal Zero kit, which was just like a, a forest in a box. Uh, and so um, I started it at 16 and I finished it at 18. Wow. Uh, and so, um, and that kind of started that journey of just experimenting after that. Uh, every every project, I try something new and kind of hone uh, the the methods that worked for me and didn't work for me. And and so it's been it's been a fun fun journey gosh it's been I mean, john you do a little bit of scratch building yeah. right not to that level though right i mean you've done a couple of scratch builds in your channel yeah it's it's something that i don't really enjoy <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> um yeah like the, the most recent one was the uh the super bandit which i mean it's not a not a box of wood but it's a fiberglass body with everything removed from it right so um that was I, I told the owner if he happened to have another one kicking around, I wouldn't be interested in doing it for a couple of years. Like one a year is enough for me. So I can't um, do it. I and can't. those BBM yeah. kits build really fast. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I've done a I've done a box of wood kit before, and it's that was <laughs> I that see was four some years things. ago. So I actually I really things. enjoy carving wood. I, it's been a while since I've bashed balsa, and so <laughs> after I finished my current project, which is this big T twenty eight, I'm gonna I'm gonna build one of my dad's kits actually. And, nice. Yeah. I um I can't I can't do it because the, the, so there are some planes <laughs> they make that. I would love that are, that they don't make out of foam, that they make out of like kits or balsa that you can get, you know, like one off kind of, not one off, but you know, different planes. And I like, you know, a lot of the World War II era planes and, you know, they don't, they don't make every model in, in foam, obviously. Mm -hmm. I just can't spend that kind of time to fly something that I know I'm going to crash. I just cannot <laughs> do it. Well, you know, <laughs> it's, stop it's, crashing. I, I yeah. try. I, I really do. <laughs> I, I try. I try really hard, but it just, I can't. I give you everybody know, a lot of credit. That's the reality of RC, right? You can't, yeah. you can't fly anything you're not willing to lose. That's right. So, they, all, they all have an expiry date. So, yeah. One year projects that I thought was an, an, an gorgeous plane. And we're, we're going to talk about the Hustler because we, it actually, it's, that's how I kind of got the idea of inviting you on because it, it came up on a couple of episodes ago. We were talking about your 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 hustler and the demise of it, which I'm sorry. I'm, it was sad to see that, but yeah, <laughs> what a gorgeous pull! Like a gorgeous build, gorgeous plane. I mean, right. I I would have been locked in a room for like two weeks. If I <laughs> that thing. You know what I mean? Like, I would have been devastated, devastated. Yeah, I mean. Uh, I can only blame myself for that crash too, because uh, I made a mistake on the speed controllers. Um, I bought controllers. I was so concerned about the weight of that airplane. Is that really what happened? I read that. Is that, yeah. is that really the speed what controllers you overheated and started shutting down? When I looked at the data, first of all, the shrink wrap on the controllers was like non-existent. Mm. It had pretty much shrunk Melted. so hard. Yeah. Uh, and, <clears throat> it's like oh those got hot and then when i checked the data it, they were at like 300 degrees oh and so God. they were i i can't believe solder wasn't starting to melt off yeah <laughs> wow and because i think that that's as high as the temperature would actually read so they may have actually been hotter than that right so what's nope. um what speed controllers were in there and maybe what should you have put in there what's what's the the variation yeah so i was so to give you a little background on, on the airframe. So my friend, a good friend of mine, he tooled that airplane. It was all composite. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was kind of a heavy airframe for the size of it. Doesn't help that the landing gear are really complex and heavy. Uh, yeah. It was like two pounds worth of landing gear because they were wow. scale and how they folded up and all that stuff. What were the gear made out of? Aluminum? Uh, yeah, aluminum and steel, right? They had to be strong enough so the... The plunger, I think, in there was steel, but the rest of it was aluminum. But yeah. Um, and so I was really concerned about the weight. And so when I bought the speed controllers to go with the, the Schubler fans, um, I bought controllers that uh, had less, I, I bought smaller controllers than I normally would have, mm -hmm. uh, thinking one that I still had headroom on them, uh, but to to save the weight right um and so it didn't really connect because when i was checking on the ground uh this the current draw um i was like okay we, we're still good uh, but what ended up happening is the current increased when it started flying uh, because the inlet lips were so sharp that the fans weren't actually fully loading statically oh. uh, because i was getting separation like it was just turbulent air feeding into the into the fans yeah the, the inlets were really sharp uh and so um and and you could actually hear a tonal difference once it kind of starts moving the fans clean up get a little bit quieter uh and so i didn't realize it until after i was checking the data and it's like mm -hmm. oh my gosh the, the the current draw is way higher than i ever measured statically yeah and that was midway through the flight based on the data and so um it was like so that I, I had 75 amp speed controllers in there i was seeing currents peak currents 
in the flight of like 90 plus Wow! <laughs> in, in the data loggers. And so I just totally messed up. It was completely my yeah. fault. They were too small. Uh, and I didn't what, have what any in there. What? What, what? what amp were they? 75 amp. They were the oh, okay. castle, castle speed controllers. Um, 75 amp each? Yeah, I needed to have like 120s. So yeah. not that this makes it any uh, any less painful, but at least that video has eight hundred and forty five thousand views. <laughs> True. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, there is some there is, is some that, payback is there. That right? you were looking up. <laughs> yeah, I was, I, I'm just on your on your YouTube page looking through. Yeah. Uh, so um, I don't think you need that. Job. Generally speaking, the the comments have actually been pretty supportive. Uh, like. 80 percent of them when it first nice. was posted it was like yeah. 95 plus were positive you know uh yeah. but as it goes wider you know you get the other yeah. people yeah. In, whatever it is what it is but um but even then uh there's still a lot of really positive comments that come through which is that's, is really that's nice. good that was was that that wasn't the maiden right it was. The airplane only flew once <laughs> oh my God. that's the uh from triumph to tragedy Video. Yeah. And how long? Yeah. How long did you spend? I mean, hours wise, what did you have into that? Oh, I don't know how many hours. There's a lot of hours in there. Um, it was eight months, I think, that I spent working on it. Now you build stuff for like shows for like Top Gun and stuff like that, right? That's my dad did. Yeah. Okay. Do you, yeah. you don't do that too? I thought you did that as well. You do a little competition stuff, or I do. Oh, oh, oh. Sorry. Um, you're talking about scale competition. Yeah, I yeah. thought you meant the movie. My dad no, no. Model for the movie Top Gun. I didn't know. Oh, he did he? Yeah, oh, wow. yeah. I thought that's what you were talking about. Oh, um, that's pretty cool. Yeah, so he built. Um, he was contracted by the special effects company to build the models for Top Gun. Hmm. Wow! Um, and then he did Firefox. That's an old movie. If you guys are familiar with that one, it's Clint old Clint Clint Eastwood movie where he steals a Russian stealth fighter thing or something <laughs> Never saw and that. then uh iron eagle that's one of my personal yeah. favorites actually yeah. i hate to say it the um, first one was good the last yeah. the, the two and three weren't that good uh, there was even a fourth one which was even worse uh, yeah the but... first one was good though <laughs> uh but anyways yeah so i've done yeah competition for sure uh i've won the u.s scale masters twice i won in 2016 and in 2019 Wow. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I do enjoy building for competition and competing. It's like the U.S. Scale Masters, especially, they're a really great um, organization. Like the, the group of flyers that compete in that competition are really great competitors. Mm -hmm. and, and it's a really supportive community. Like, you, you know, we're all there to just, you know, do our best and, and see how we stack up. And, and so yeah. um, it's it's really great. To see I, I never got a chance to, to compete in top gun i always wanted to and moving to tennessee i was like there was hope and then they they you know frank tiano passed away and then now the event no longer exists but right uh, yeah hopefully somebody might pick it up but we'll see what happens in the future i mean you're the uh, guy you could do it and then i went to the nats last year the ama nats and that, that was fun it was it was a good time but the uh the facility is not real conducive for the size of airplane that I typically fly. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's nice, tall fescue grass. Yeah. And so if you got small tires, it just doesn't work. <laughs> right. So, yeah. All right. What's, uh, what, so what's next? What's the next hustler type project that you have in your head that you want to get on? Yeah. So I am currently actually, hold on, let me grab some. So I'm currently putting together, so I, with all the book and everything that I had going on, um, I had not really done much in the way of building for like months. It's been a couple months. And so I was building a new website. I was writing and publishing books and yeah, it was kind of nuts, but um, I'm finally back working in the shop again and I've got the Legend Hobby T28 here. And so that's going to get one mm -hmm. of these in it. Oh, nice. Nice. So this is the FG60. Uh, and then um, once that is done, which it's actually all I have left is the engine installation and to kind of wrap up, like getting the cowl on it and stuff. 
all of the landing gear in it finally and, and they're working and uh so there's not much left done on that and so after that i want to build one of my dad's um uh, f86 saber kits mm -hmm. okay perfect for a 90 millimeter fan uh it's fiberglass fuselage foam core wings uh you'll love this john it's a, a carved balsa <laughs> stabilizers <laughs> wow <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's actually a really fun build it's a fairly quick build as those go um and so i just wanted something that i could really fly here at my home field because i can't fly big jets there oh, okay. it's only a 400 foot runway it's it's 400 by 100 so yeah it's actually a really great space and it's a beautiful runway um it's just the length is kind of hard for larger jets are and you guys so, asphalt or is it a grass yeah, Yep, it's asphalt. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice. Uh, there are some, uh, from what I've heard, some really nice grass runways out here too that I haven't had a mm -hmm. chance to check out. But so I want to build the Fury because I can, well, the F eighty six right that I'm going to actually build into a, an FJ Fury, which is the Navy version. Um, I've got scale struts underway. A friend of mine is is helping me out with those and and. Um, but I want to build that because I can fly it here at my home field really, yeah. really easy. I keep it light, uh, put an 8S setup in it, and I should be able to have a lot of fun with it out there. Nice. Uh, and then after that, I'd, I'd really like to, to revisit the Hustler. Um, so I'm kind of saving my pennies for that at the moment. <laughs> you said the airframe was composite on that? Yes. So you, you have a blank for it, so you can build another airframe. Relatively. Yeah, my, my friend... Um, he he did all the layup on it he's in california okay so um but i have to purchase another airframe from right. him mm -hmm. uh, and right. then the landing gear were pretty in pretty bad shape which means that it's almost like another set of landing gear which cost more than the airframe yeah. <laughs> right. Right. so what about uh, the edfs and stuff they were all smoked too uh I sent the the fans back to Schubler and they fixed the ones that they could and they replaced the parts on the other stuff that mm -hmm. um, needed replacing. So I've got the fans all back uh, and I'll need much bigger speed controllers when it's time comes. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but yeah, no. Otherwise, it's just like the rest of the stuff is easy and, and kind of already taken care of. It's just the, the airframe and the, the retract. Yeah. Right, right. How's the book doing? How's it being received? I mean, in a digital age, you came out with a, a paperback, which I understand. I get that, right? Yeah. It's easier to keep out in the shop while people are reviewing and working on stuff, and they don't have to have an iPad or something next to them to look at a book. So I, I get it. But how's it, how's it going? It looks like it's getting a lot of good attention from all the comments and stuff I saw. So yeah, it, it's the reception has been really good, um, and so I'm really happy about that. Uh, it's, I, you know, I poured a lot of myself into it and you right. never know. And, and I did go the hard copy route because originally I was like, ah, oh, it should, I'll just do this as an ebook. But I, I, when I think about myself, <laughs> like I hate ebooks, <laughs> you know, it's like, right, I'm going right. to get the iPad and figure out where I am. And it's so much nicer to have a hard copy of, yeah. of a book, especially one that you really like and, and you can just thumb through it and. And so I was like, all right, I got to figure out how to publish this as a hard copy. Uh, and so I did go that route, although, you know, I do ebooks are available as well. Um, yeah. But I knew knowing my audience and the kind of myself and, and knowing that, you know, the average right. age of my audience is probably older than I am, um, <laughs> that they probably want to want to go a hard copy instead of a, a e-copy. You know what I mean? I do the same thing. So like, especially lately, a lot of manufacturers now, like some of the electronics, they're giving you QR codes for manuals. So like a flight mm -hmm. controller, they're giving you a QR code for a flight controller. And I'm like, I need well, the pin out. I did. So yeah. I, like, I, I print it and I'm like, all right, there's the pin out. Like I can't do anything with a QR code. Give me a freaking manual. <laughs> Keeps the cost of goods down, man. Yeah, I, I get it. Because, you know, it. I'll be honest. It's, I self-published right? right. self the book, and, and so I, right. I'm purchasing 
copies from they I self published through Amazon and and so you know the cost of goods for a, a paperback book is not Gee. inexpensive not right mm -hmm. so um and and for for now I'm I'm putting it out there for free if for folks who are willing to cover the shipping and handling and which is that's really cool that you're doing that so totally well, I'll, absolutely I'll leave the the link in the uh description for the website for the book because that's that's pretty big that you're doing that, especially with having to lay out the cost of the printing and everything for yeah. you to, to do it for free just for shipping and handling is a big deal so yeah. thanks more more people should take advantage of that yeah so i'm i'm curious about the thing that i use most of yours i use it almost every scale build you probably know what i'm talking about the I'm random not... motion generator oh <laughs> How did that I didn't realize about? that you had. Uh, yeah, I guess so. If if you're putting what like basically Warbird every every there. Warbird pilot we order, yeah. we always have a random motion generator that comes with it. So it's like oh, constant, you get them from so. Adam. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So how did that come about? Uh, so a few years ago, I did the um, VQ Warbirds B24. Mm -hmm with uh tomas at legend hobby and so i was like man there's got to be a better way to do these turrets right because this is dumb you put it on your your rudder yeah, your or something and like this like, come on that's that's <laughs> doesn't make any sense and so i had the idea i was like man we've got to be able to move these randomly and so yeah i um had the idea and i worked with a friend of mine uh who helped kind of develop the the electronics for me and mm -hmm. and um i actually he just sent me a version that'll run four servos simultaneously oh cool that i'm testing out so um but right now it'll do two servos uh independently of each other and and so yeah that's kind of where the idea came from was yeah it started with the turrets and i was like well these turrets shouldn't be moving when the gear are down right when you're yeah. landing configuration and so it's like all right it, i need to be able to set it up on a switch but i also yeah. want to be able to set it up with just direct power and it just runs randomly and so so we set it up that way you can power it from you know channel tie it to a channel and turn it on and off or you can just have it run passively with the power source mm -hmm. uh, and so yeah every pilot that i <laughs> i have that moves um yeah i'll plug that into it and it's it's a fun little thing and and actually it's kind of you never would have thought that you'd ever want to randomly move a servo in some way right <laughs> exactly <laughs> project but it actually is is been a kind of a thing it, so it's kind of funny super cool what the yeah hell it's uh video? anthony my we video, lost you yeah my video is blank right <laughs> yeah we, we it is yeah we use them a lot in the shop and they're uh I mean, yeah, they're they're great little little devices. So, <laughs> well, cool. I, I appreciate that for <laughs> sure. Using them, yeah, that's cool. What's going on? That's all right. I'm, I'm getting through it. Can you oh, hear me? Way, I put the. We can hear uh, you. I put there the you know. sales One camera site in the private chat. So when you, it's the uh, artofscalemodeling.com. Perfect. Yeah, I'll, I'll link that in the YouTube description when we put the video out. I'll link your channel and stuff too. Although you have a way more subscribers than we do, so that's okay. But uh, that's okay. We get um the last couple of podcast episodes have actually been pretty, pretty good. We had uh, I don't know if you've ever met Dag the Aviator. He was on recently. He does some pretty cool stuff. Who? who? Uh, Dag the Aviator. Oh, Dag. Uh, da uh, Damon Atwood. Damon Atwood. Yeah. 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 He does some pretty cool stuff. He was on a couple episodes ago. Um, cool. Yeah, we had the Dubro guys on the the guys from Dubro. They were they were a lot of fun. We've had some cool guests. You're, you're, mm -hmm. Now you're now you're a part of the elite guest. That's you're it. Part of the air experience. <laughs> One of the first seventeen. Yep. <laughs> first yeah, first. Cool. Uh, I don't know. I was thinking like, what are we going to do when we come on to the one year mark? And I'm like, you know. What what might be an actually pretty cool episode is if we get all of the guests on for the one year episode, right? And oh we have like gosh. 
Could little, you imagine? Little tiny heads all, all over the little screen. tiny heads. <laughs> we'll like like we are the world. It'd be like a Brady Bunch <laughs> intro with all the little heads in a box. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I was thinking about that earlier. I was like, you know, when we get through a year, that would be pretty cool if we just had 30 guests on. Yeah. But, you know, I I have a lot of fun doing the podcast. I think it's I think it's fun, and and I am the audience. You know, people who do watch it and have subscribed have given us positive feedback about it. They said they like the episodes and stuff. You know, yeah. it's lighthearted. Um, you know, we fool around a lot. Well, I it's always fun to hear the backstories and the stuff that like I don't share in my YouTube videos. You don't really share in your your YouTube videos. You know, all this all these little details that people don't normally get to hear that really right soak yeah. up your regular content right so right right so you have a lot of um you do you have a bunch of 3d printed stuff on your site too so you i do, do a lot yeah of, you, you do a lot of printing i guess uh yeah and and it's actually rare my printers are not going at the moment <laughs> <laughs> I throw one behind usually, you. usually they're going all the time here i can lift how, how many how many do you have now let's see i've got so that is it's my resin printer Yep. And then I got to get my head out of the way. There we go. Two the Prusas there. Two Prusas. Um, so yep. I just have the three printers at the moment. Nice. Uh, nice. But the 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 really cool one is the the Form Labs, the resin printer. Oh, that's a Form Labs. That's those are nice. Yeah. I <laughs> I always wanted an SLA printer when I started getting into 3D printing because I knew the capabilities of it. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so I played around with some of the cheaper ones. And like I had an AnyCubic, which actually worked really well. Uh, yeah. But it had a really small build volume. And so I ended up getting a bigger one. And I had all kinds of problems with it. <laughs> getting it to like I had to replace the, the FEP sheet all the time. And I was like, man, this is stupid. And so I got so frustrated with it that I completely overcorrected and spent way too much money <laughs> on that machine. <laughs> the form lab machines are expensive. I was yeah. like, oh, wow, you have a form labs? Yeah. yeah. They're, they're not but cheap. It, it, you set it and forget it. It's trouble free for the most yeah, part. They make, they make really, I mean, they're kind of like industrial grade printers. That's not usually your typical hobbyist doesn't have a form labs machine at home. Yeah. John, have you true. played with SLS printing? I know you do some printing as well. Yeah. No, it's all normal, uh, normal stuff. Right, I'll yeah. show you what it can do. FDM, the regular. Yeah. Yeah. What's, uh, what does that Form Lab one go for, like cost wise, roughly? <laughs> They're expensive. <laughs> if I have to tell you the price, you can't afford it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was like, it was like four grand. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, not cheap. It was not cheap. But, I mean, this was printed on there. Right. Yeah. Yeah, the and resin printers are nuts. Yeah, it's like a pla it's plastic model quality straight yeah. off. Yeah, that's a serious yeah. machine. A lot of companies use those machines for prototyping. That Form Labs machine. Yeah, and Very so nice. I did zero prep on this. I I painted it white and started brush painting the rest of it. And there's wow. like no striations in it whatsoever. Yeah, no, so that's, that's the beauty of of resin. But it's, does it take it's longer than than regular like a regular printer? Say that again. Does it take longer to print? Uh, it prints differently, right? So, so the, and it depends on the type of SLA printer. Some print pretty quick. The mm -hmm. Form Labs is kind of about the same, I think. Uh, but the way that it 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 works is so the FDM printers, right? It builds it up. Yeah. As it as it goes, well, the way that the SLA works is it drops the build plate into a vat of resin and then there's yeah. a laser in there that that cures the spots that um, need to be cured in that layer and then it, yeah. it out, drops back down and does that until it builds it all the way up. And so yeah. the way you set up the, the print is completely different uh, okay. um, because it's hanging vertically and, and you want pretty much as little contact as you can. At mm -hmm. each layer, at least on the initial layers and stuff, so to minimize supports and all kinds of stuff. But uh, the end result is is wonderful, perfect for fine detail stuff. Um, yeah, it, the resin can be brittle, so you're not you don't necessarily want to use it for heavy structural things. Yeah, uh, yeah. but um, 
cockpit parts, pilots, like any detail stuff. It's, it's beautiful. Uh, and also you don't have to worry about it melting in the sun. If you, like PLA, if yeah. you're printing anything in PLA, uh, yeah. but otherwise the, the other part of it is, uh, it's a process because you have to, um, clean it. So I bought, when I got the form labs, I got their cleaning system too. So it's a big vat of alcohol that you, you know, isopropyl alcohol that you put it in and it cleans all of the excess resin off of, and then you have to mm. post cure it too. And under UV light. It's so, definitely yeah. messy. It's, yeah. It's, it, I don't so, have one because of that. The few, I don't know. How do you deal with it? Does the form labs machine do good with the fumes? Cause I know like, some yeah, of the I don't, ones. I don't smell the fumes at all. So, so I right. had that as an issue with the any cubic machine. Right. right. I, I, change over this one there's like no smell it's there's no there's much less mess because it's their own resin that you use and and you just drop it into the back of the machine you don't have to worry about filling any of the vats or anything it does all okay. that for you mm -hmm. uh, and then you just take the build plate and drop it onto their cleaning system and it drops it into the resin and the only oh, time cool. that there's that potential contamination or touching it is when you're taking it off the build plate after it's been cleaned. Um, yeah. And so you, you know, put some gloves on for that or whatever, but I've looked into them. My nephew has one and it's just the, the smell and the resin where, where my little shop is like, it, it's not good for a small enclosed area unless you get like a nice machine. Like he, he has that probably filters the fumes out before it, you know, releases it into the air because they're very smelly. Yeah, they yeah. can be. For yeah, sure. That, the any cubic resin, resin smells to high heaven, man. It's it's <laughs> bad. It's it's bad. It's it bad. stinks, man. Dude, he was doing it in his bedroom, and I, I oh it, no, it funny. he's it got it funny. in his bedroom. It's funny because I got I got him into printing. Like he, he's he's a really smart kid. He's very into like building stuff and stuff like that. So I got him. I was like, dude, you need a printer. He's sixteen year old kid. I'm like, you need a printer. So we go out. We took advantage of the micro center deal where they had the hundred dollar ender threes. So we get him his first printer, hundred dollar ender three. He's loving it, loving life, printing away. Next thing I know, he sends me a text like, "Dude, I got a resin printer." I'm like, oh, "All man. right, that's cool." <laughs> I, I was like, "It kind of told you to hold off and wait a little bit for that," but you know, <laughs> you know, he dove right into it. I, I go over his house and the things in his bedroom, and I walk into his room. I'm like, "Hold, dude, this." <laughs> <laughs> Got him in trouble with his mom and dad. They ejected it from his room. And he actually got he he was doing something. He splashed some of the resin in his eye and had to go to the doctor. Oh and no. Was like, this is all your fault. You got him into this. I was like, no, nope, <laughs> I got him into an FDM machine. They're completely different. Yes, very much different. I take no responsibility. That's yeah. Funny. But they I couldn't I like I opened up the the resin just to see and i was like wow like it's like nail polish dude it's like that bad wow. like you smell it like really bad i feel and like it's worse really than nail bad. polish <laughs> yeah it's it's brutal it's it's got a really strong odor and uh -huh. it, in a small area it's not good so yeah that's why i don't i don't have any i would love to because um there's some stuff that i would like to print like gimbals and stuff like that um like homemade gimbals that would be stronger in resin it's just I can't deal with it. I can't deal with the mess. I can't deal with the smell. It's all bad. And I'm not spending four grand on a form lamps machine. So that's <laughs> Yeah. Like I said, I, I just, I got so, no, I get it. I, I get it. Corrected, man. <laughs> I understand. I've been eyeing up that five headed Prusa monster that they just came out with the, uh, the XL and that thing. Yeah. Is, yeah. You know, it, with all the heads on it, it's almost five grand. By the time oh, you're all really? said and done, yeah, it's expensive. Oh, that much, yeah, it's expensive. The uh, uh, kind of Jones is for one of the bamboo labs. I've been seeing a lot of those around. I love mine. It's awesome. Yeah, they're nice. They're nice. And if you get um, the uh, like the point two nozzle, so point two nozzle, and you don't, you can't print any of the CF, the carbon fiber materials, but the detail is outstanding. So uh, interesting. Yeah, and with what material? Um, so for like, I do my little name plates that I actually put in each aircraft. So it's got uh, black back, black or gray backgrounds, and then all the colors of my of my logo. So yellow, white, and pink. 
Okay. Um, and I, I print that out of, uh, um, ABS or, um, okay. Pet G as well too. So both, yeah. both are nice. Perfect. So, yeah. 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 I've... One day maybe. So I just <laughs> picked up the, um, the Cobra three from any cubic and that's the new multicolor from them. Okay. Yeah. And it, it was under five hundred dollars for the printer. Well, they had this early bird special. I jumped on it pretty early. Um, it was like four fifty, and it came with the multicolor unit and the printer. It's a badass little machine. I, so I, the multicolor I, unit, what is it like? Is it like the uh, AMS with bamboo, like a yeah, box? It's yeah, it's exactly like the AMS. Cool. Oh, interesting. It's just like the AMS. It's not a closed printer. Uh, here, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, hold on. I'll probably unplug the camera, but it's right there. I don't know if you can see it oh, right there. Oh, hold on. I'm being my screen's Top. backwards. There you go. Bottom so there's, shelf. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. there's, there's the printer, and that's the multi code, the multi unit. Okay. Cool. So, yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, for the price of the printer with the multi color unit, $450. Right now, they still have the early bird special too. Right now, um, yeah, it's a pretty good deal, and it 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 runs, it works. It's it's you know, I don't have thousands of hours through it. I've, I've probably ran you know, ten prints through the thing so far. Yeah, um, yeah. it's actually pretty funny the way. It, so the way the bamboo machine gets rid of the the, the little poop when it changes colors, it kind yeah. of just like slides out the back of it. Yeah, <laughs> this one just flings it. It's actually really funny. <laughs> It like throws it a foot. So you get them all over all over yeah. your room. So what I'm thinking about doing now is I'm gonna print out a little basketball hoop. Yeah. So oh, it like swings it into the basketball hoop. <laughs> and catches it into like the basketball hoop. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah, it's funny. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. But it's yeah. listen, it's great. The technology's come so far from yeah, you know, I started printing in like 2017-ish. Um and the technology's yeah. come so far. It's it's amazing what these things can do now. For sure. Yeah, it really is. You so know. Chris, what's your uh, what's your favorite plane in your stable? I'm curious. Oh, I'll give you two. Sure. One one's a jet and one's a warbird. So my favorite warbird is still the Legend Hobby A1 Sky Raider. Um, it's such a good flying model, and it yeah. looks pretty pretty cool. The <laughs> you. The, the A1 as a, a design is just ugly, but man, I love it. <laughs> yeah. It's just a big, huge beast. <laughs> uh, and then uh, favorite jet right now is probably the Sky Ray, the, the scratch built Sky Ray that, that I did. Because nice. uh, it's easy to fly here at the field and, and it flies incredible. Yeah. Uh, so you got to ask him the other question, John. You know, I know you want to ask him. You got to ask him how many. That's always that's always the question. <laughs> how, how many do you have? How many planes? I've got more unbuilt than I do built airplanes. <laughs> what, what, what do you think your your aggregate total is? Oh, it's probably not as much as you probably might think. You know, like review models and things. I, I don't. I, you know, I can't keep all that stuff, yeah. so I, right. I give a lot of them away. Uh, but I've got a stack of kits that i'm anxious to build and so i've probably got probably at least a dozen unbuilt things in my other garage mm -hmm. uh, and then in here i've got probably another i don't know dozen or so uh, mostly flyable airplanes that's not nice. horrible so yeah no yeah that's reasonable i figured yeah. you would have said he's always making fun of me i think i have close to <laughs> you, you, let's just say you know give or take a dozen you know yeah <laughs> yeah exactly at any one time they're yeah they're going up and down but and... that's not bad that's not bad at all i think i have close to 50 and yeah. probably out of that 50 probably how many do you fly i was just gonna say probably only like 15 or in flying shape that sounds right. like something my wife would say hmm. yeah yeah i would say only about 15 of them are flyable right now Crashed my jet a week ago or two weeks ago at this point. Not happy about that. Crashed my little hand toss jet that I love. Uh, so what was it? Was it? So, the uh, Motion F-16, the 64 millimeter. Oh, okay. Yeah, it had a um, 
I put FPV cameras on all my jets. I can't fly a line of sight anymore, so I fly with goggles on all my planes. And do you some, throw it too? Yeah, I throw you, it. You launch it. And how do you yeah. do that? With goggles you, down under the hood. Yeah. <laughs> huh? Yeah. There's videos of me on YouTube doing that. Throwing yeah. Them. Um, I just goggles down. I power it up. <laughs> I know I keep my controller in my left hand. <laughs> Can you just up. imagine what that feels like? Like, oh and my I, gosh, I'm going to and I let it rip. Hold on. Right. I'll, I'll pull it up real quick. I, I, I can pull it up real quick. <laughs> for you. I've got an FPV drone that we'll play around with once in a while, and it's pretty wild. <clears throat> I can't. Yeah, all right. Hold on I could imagine hand. like hand, hand launching. No. Under the hood. Right, here we go. Uh, do this for you. Share screen. Share screen. Let me see. There we go. Share. All right. Can you see it? Oh, and you're standing yeah. up too. Oh my god. That's, yeah, I can't fly sitting down. That's my F8 Crusader. Uh, oh, I love that F8 Crusader is actually one of my favorite chats. Jeez. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, if I was under the hood standing up, I'd fall over so fast. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Uh, let me see. Some of them I will. Some of them I will do. Um, like I'll pull the, the goggles down after afterwards, but um, for so the you, most, you toss part, them, you get them airborne, and then and then just yank them down. Yeah. So like this one, kind of a bad throw. I barely yeah. saved this one and it made it, you know, and then I pulled the goggles down afterwards. Um, but yeah, most of them I will do with the goggles down. Like this one, I launched the goggles down. Yeah. I launch them with the goggles down. Do you take off any of them from the ground? Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just actually did a, uh, I just did a review on one of the uh, planes and it was a cub type plane that I take off from the ground. I take mm -hmm. off from the, it, it, so I've, I've gotten down landing um, pretty good with the goggles. The biggest thing is um, your, your field of depth or your depth perception yeah. off when you're, when you're landing, right. Or, or yeah. not so much taking off landing for sure. Um, but yeah, I actually, yeah, I could show you really quickly that I, 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 I've gotten it down pretty good. Um, Have you ever done any full scale flying? It took a lot of crashing. Like a <laughs> lot of crashing. Was that a question for me or for Anthony? <laughs> for Anthony. Cause I mean, flying under with the goggles on is very much, it's, it's pretty, pretty similar. There we go. I muted that. And they tell you like when you're landing, um, you know, you want to look at the end of the runway. You don't want to look right in front of you when you're in. So the like full scale flying, like flying real planes. Yeah. No, no. So here, I'll show you. This is a takeoff real quick. Let's see. So when you're doing this, are your goggles up or down? No, my goggles will be down in one second. There you go. Goggles are down. Wife is filming. She's my cameraman. <laughs> yeah. Goggles down and I just take off. Yeah. See that to me, that's, that's better. And then, and then my video <laughs> yeah. feed. My I couldn't imagine feed, tossing it. <laughs> my video feed is off to the left. That's what I'm seeing in my goggles. Yeah. And then uh, here's the landing. Hold on. This is the most recent. I have other ones. This is the most recent one. Hold on. There we go. Let's see. It's about right. Yep, there we go. It's me coming in. And a little bit of a bobble there. Boop. Wild. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah, it takes, like I said, it it took me, um, so primarily everything that I flew um, was hand launch under the goggles. Yeah. Because you know what happens? So, like, especially, like, with the race wings, like, 
we make these little foam race wings. They're just EPO yeah. foam and they're fast, right? Um, they're squirrely when you yeah. toss them, right? So sometimes you can't like throw it and be like, pull the goggles down and, and save it, right? Well, at the same time. So I realized that I did better if I had my controller in my hand and I did the launch and then I could just throw my hand on the controller really quickly and save it. Yeah. I've tried that just normally and it doesn't <laughs> usually work out that well. Yeah, some of I'm them are sketchy. I, I will say terrible, terrible crazy. at hand launching. So something but, must have happened. Something must have happened to my jet that I didn't see from last season from not flying uh from flying it last year. I, I, something must have been wrong with it because I literally just joined a club not so long ago, and I told John this a couple of weeks ago. Um, my first launch at the new club, and I'm the only like you know one of the only like FBV guys, and all the other guys are kind of like worried about it. <laughs> I throw it, and it like goes up and like backwards, and all you hear is "Look out, heads up!" <laughs> first impressions at the field. So yeah. it did the same thing to me um, when I was flying at my little local field over here. And I, I wasn't able to recover it, and it just plowed into the ground. So I, I don't know if you know something happened one of the control surfaces or something. I, I don't know. I I love that. No, job. it just reached its expiration date, man. Yeah, yeah exactly. I mean, what happens? <laughs> it expired. <laughs> I get attached to some planes, and I hate when they like crash. So like that's that was one of my favorite planes because like it was small enough that I could just throw it in my car or my truck and just go to the field, to school field and fly a couple packs real quick. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And it was a lot of fun. And whenever I fly that, like people are always like, if there's anybody walking by with their kids or anything, like, Oh, there's a jet in the air. And they're like, it's cool. And you know, so it, it kind of sucks. Um, that was probably one of my favorite, like hand to us, quick jets like that. And the other one was the F8 Crusader. That one met an untimely demise as well. I think the Crusader is a good-looking plane, though. Like, it's one of my favorite models as far as jets go. That, uh, I mean, the little one is, I don't know about that one, but, I mean, I've got a lot of time flying in my A7, one of my dad's designs, and it is quirky. The, yes. the configuration is is really goofy because you got the big, yep. tall tail. you got that anhedral wing, yep. uh, and so it's it's – as a result, like of the anhedral, it's roll unstable. Yes. Uh, it 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 hates crosswinds. It <laughs> hates rudder. Like it's the weirdest thing. But but it actually flies good. You just have to know that if it does this weird thing, you just let it do that weird thing because it'll yep. stabilize itself out. You try this is the A, the A seven, right? Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. You got to keep the speed up too. That's the other and, thing. Yeah. And so, yeah, at slow speeds, it, it'll it might wobble or something. Yeah, it doesn't like slow. So speeds. I would imagine the F eight is much the same. I saw uh, Dave Hudson. I think I think that's his last name. The F eight that he had built, the big turbine one. I saw him fly and unfortunately crashed that at Top Gun. But it was in a crosswind, and and the airplane, you know, got up on its wing on the takeoff and. He was able yeah. to get it off the ground okay, but then I don't know, some something happened in flight where it ended up going in. But yeah, it, it looked very the, the the takeoff looked very familiar. <laughs> I am slowly becoming more of an EDF jet guy. Like and I I actually like the smaller like hand throw ones. I like those a lot. I have a couple of the bigger ones too, but I like the smaller hand toss ones. Um I can't. I I had, I had a motion sixty four millimeter F nine F Panther that I upgraded to four S and took out the sixty four millimeter and put a seventy millimeter in it. And I for some reason I couldn't get that plane to fly. Mm. It, I had a couple unsuccessful takeoffs. I was looking forward to that one. Um, Did it have enough inlet area? The inlets are pretty small on a Panther. Yeah, I don't know what the deal is. Why it wouldn't? It just wouldn't fly. It couldn't. I, I, after like throwing it three times and breaking it and gluing it back together, I kind of gave up. Um, oh, you're hand launching it. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Maybe that's why. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's squirrely sometimes. Listen, it's, you know, but like you were, so you were talking about like the fields with grass and stuff. Like some of the fields that we fly at, like one of the fields I fly at is in an abandoned psych center. Great big open field, but the grass is, you know, four inches long and you can't yeah. take off unless you have like a cub, right? With giant wheels, you're not taking off, you know? Yep. So, a, a lot so of Chris, stuff. do you, um, do you go to many events? in a year or uh, I don't go to as many as I would like to. Yeah. Um, I usually went to like when I was back in California, I went yeah. to probably three or so a year. Um, cause there were a couple that were local, uh, since moving, I haven't been able to go to as many. Uh, the other part of it is, you know, my son is in his going to be in his last year of high school. And so, mm -hmm. um, I have been, it's been harder to, because he, he hasn't gotten his license yet. He should have it soon, but it's been harder to, to actually go do some of that stuff because um, I've needed to take him to various different things. Be taxi man. Yeah. yeah. Plus during the, during the school year, I, I actually mentor a, a robotics team here in town and cool. Very cool. Um, so it's, uh, it's kind of hard because you know, we meet on Saturdays and, yeah. and competitions are on Saturdays. And, and so that takes up a lot of time during the, from like August to, um, like March, May, April. basically March. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Is your son on the team? He is. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. He really enjoys, uh, the team that it, it's a, it's a community team, which means a lot of them are, um, a lot of them are actually homeschooled. Our, our, both our kids were homeschooled until, um, like my, my daughter all the way through graduation, my son, we put in to a school here, which was definitely the right choice for him. But, but anyways, um, yeah, so there's last year we had how many kids? I think we were like nine, nine or 10 kids on his team. Plus we had two other teams. Oh, cool. Hmm. So it was, yeah, it was fun. It was a fun year. Is your son awesome. into the airplanes and stuff? No, I wish, man. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been able to get him into RC really. How, how old is he now? Seventeen. There's still yeah. hope. Yeah, true. <laughs> there's, um, there's still time. He does enjoy like the FPV drone. He'll he'll chase me around with that once in a while. Oh, cool. Um, he, you know, RC cars, that kind of stuff is kind of fun, <clears> but. Just, just like me, the RC cars are fun for him. Like he likes to put them together and run them yeah. for a little bit, and then he get bored and it's like, all right. yeah. Right. So, um, yeah, but couldn't really get him into the airplanes. He's just not not a aviation guy. It's not where his interests are. Mm -hmm. Some people, it happens later in life. Yeah. No. Yeah, we never know. He might see something cool one day and at an airfield or something or something fly overhead one day and be like, you know, my dad's into this stuff and he might just get into it one day. You never know. Yeah. I, I got into it a little bit later in life. I started out when I was younger and then kind of went back to it, you know, the airplanes were my dad's thing and I was into cars and then I did more cars than anything else. And then when I got older, I got back into the airplane. So still hope. Don't give yeah. up. I mean, for me, I grew up, loving airplanes. I still love airplanes. Uh, um, and just, it just is who I am. <laughs> it had to be cool if your dad owning a hobby shop, right? I mean, yeah. Uh, so I, kid, I, I, I do, uh, you know, I've played with everything in the hobby pretty much. I'm sure. Um, and, but I used to walk up and down the, so my dad had a really fantastic store in Southern California and he still had the storefront and he had a wall full of plastic models. And I used to just walk the plastic model aisle for hours, learning all of the different airplanes that were there. It was kind of like my aircraft identification course. <laughs> <laughs> so I just used to learn that stuff and, and I was just fascinated by them all. And that's and, cool. Yeah. yeah. That was cars for me. I did a lot of those test tours cars oh, yeah. when I was younger, painting the 
bodies and the wheels and the interiors and i was i was into building the cars yeah the cars were built a lot of plastic models as a kid for sure and and i still love plastic modeling but i don't build much now because it's like if i'm going to spend that much time on a project i'm going to be able to fly it yeah exactly (laughs) (laughs) but um i i still have a collection of plastic models and I, you know, a growing collection, I should say, because whenever I start a new project, I, that's the first yeah. thing I look for. It's a plastic model and plastic model decals. And, but nice. the, the cool thing about it is I find so much inspiration from the plastic model guys. There's a bunch of plastic modelers that I follow, like on Instagram and stuff that just do incredible. Work. Yeah. It's yeah. just really amazing what they can do at such a small scale. What made you pick the hustler? What 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 made you pick that? It hustler is just a cool airplane. That was <laughs> it. So unique. Um, and my friend had had the the tools, and I wanted to build one. That's and, cool. Uh, yeah. So, what do you think about the state of the hobby right now? I, you, we, we talked about that a little in the beginning. Do you, you feel like it's growing right now with social media and everything, or do you think? I feel like there's kind of we're kind of in a growth stage right now. I don't I don't know though. It's, yeah, I feel- I, what I see is is there's kind of a gap, right? Um, there there's because I'm seeing more and more kids getting into it of late. Like you see younger kids uh, at events and and more than I've seen in in quite a while, which is really really encouraging. Um, I mean RC aviation truly is a stepping stone to careers and other things in aviation right my my, uh, i went aerospace engineering because of rc aviation and and Mm -hmm. actually i mean so much of my life has been influenced from the hobby i mean i even met my wife at an rc trade show believe it or not <laughs> that's all you're all in man you are all yeah. in <laughs> yeah <laughs> um but uh so but what i what i see is like there's definitely an older you know the the, the average age of the hobby is definitely older um yeah. and and what I see is like, there's a gap between kind of, you know, 50 to 20. There's doesn't seem to be a whole lot of, not as many as you would hope that are in the hobby, but I'm seeing more kids getting into it, which is really, really encouraging. So um, I I feel like, yeah, we're, we're moving in the right direction for sure. And, and Mm -hmm. um, now that, you know, the FAA stuff is kind of, we're kind of on the other side of that now for the moment. Um, I think that helps too. Yeah. Uh, Because there was a lot of frustration by, by folks about all of that, but. For um, for now it's on the other side of it. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, I, I'm hopeful for it for sure. I, I think we, we are in a, in a growth stage or maybe starting to enter into a growth stage, you know? Yeah. I think it's like you said, I think it's important. And, you know, our high school has a, has a drone club and, uh, and a robotics club. And you start seeing people going from, you know, they have like special robotics kits and stuff. I don't know if yours is like the same thing, but they have like specific kits that they have to build for competitions and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But then you see them breaking out of that, you know, going from the clubs and then kind of stepping out and doing it on their own and starting to play yeah. with cars and trucks and tanks and drones and and going from there. So yeah, I, I'm hopeful too. You know, it's hard yeah, to pull me away from your tablets. <laughs> it's like yeah. go outside. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, Horizon st- keeps turning profits, right? So it must be doing okay. <laughs> they keep pumping out new stuff, which boggles my mind because I know the cost of that tooling for yeah. aircraft is nuts. But yeah. hey, as know. long as Anthony keeps hand launching and wrecking aircraft. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I'm not buying anything else, dude. I got you know, <laughs> not happening. Don't be a quitter. <laughs> yeah. If you saw what my uh inventory looked like right now, you'd have a heart attack. <laughs> it was not good. So I think, yeah, we'll, we'll 
probably start wrapping up. Chris, thank you for coming on. I think it was yeah, an awesome sure. episode. Yeah. Oh, thanks stuff. for having me. It's It's been fun. I, I enjoy yeah. doing this stuff. So thank you, everybody. I'm going to have a link to all of Chris's stuff in uh, – all of the, the uh, comments and the links and all that stuff will be down in the description. Awesome. Thanks, guys. It was a pleasure. Right. Thanks, everybody. All right. Thanks. Take care.